Hi, welcome to Ames Response to COVID-19, a question and answer program where Ames area organizations respond to COVID-19 questions provided by you, our audience. I'm Susan Guiasa, Public Relations Officer with the City of Ames. On today's show, my guests are Andrea Cardenas, our Health Promotion Coordinator with the City of Ames, and Mark Lambert, our City Attorney. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start with Andrea. Um, a number of people in Story County right now are testing positive for COVID-19. You're seeing the numbers not head in the direction that we'd like them to. What can we do to get those numbers declining? Right. So, you know, fortunately, with seven or eight months into the pandemic response, we have enough experience that we can look and see what's been happening in other countries and other parts of the United States to see what works and what doesn't. Uh, and what we're finding is, you know, in addition to universal masking, uh, which Story County has already implemented, uh, the, the mask mandate, uh, limiting group sizes is really important, um, limiting size of capacity for restaurants, I think 50% capacity has been used in other locations in combination with some of the mask mandates to lower the overall transmission rates or spread of the illness in the communities. So, for example, uh, in the state of Arizona, uh, back in June when they had some major outbreaks, they implemented a lot of those measures and uh, they saw a 75% decrease in the spread of the virus when they implemented all of those combined. So those are certainly some things that we can do um, consistently from a policy perspective. Um, what we can do as an individual are some of the same things we've been talking about, and that includes you know, can always wearing your mask when you can't be six feet or further from somebody, uh, social distancing, so limiting your, how many people that you're around, and uh, also making sure that uh, you're staying home when you're sick. Uh, and, you know, I'm seeing a little more people getting tired of following some of these practices. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's not always convenient um, if you think you just have the sniffles to stay home. But really the only way to know if you have COVID or not is to get tested. And so we just recommend everybody get tested and, and confirm that they don't have the virus before they go back out in public or to work or whatever, wherever it is that they need to be. Well, I know there's been a lot of emphasis this year on flu shots, and why is that important? Yeah, so the flu has a lot of the same symptoms as COVID-19. So even just from a practical perspective, you have to treat it like COVID-19 until you know that it's not. And you could have employees out with COVID-19 and also other employees out with the flu. So just as far as keeping businesses open and, and our workforce healthy, it's important to get a flu shot uh, to really help prevent the spread of the flu. Um, in addition to that, uh, in Iowa, we tend to see the flu peak uh, most of the time in February or the early part of the calendar year. And it's not too late to get a flu vaccine. Uh, that, that will give us plenty of time to, to build up immunity and for that to be effective to prevent spread of the flu. Uh, during those times when flu transmission is high, we, it really puts a stress on our healthcare system. Doctor's offices, appointments get filled up, our hospitals get filled up when people have complications or more severe cases of the flu. And since we already have the COVID-19 virus spreading, and that's also doing a lot of those same things, having both at the same time can really overwhelm our healthcare system. So getting the flu shot can not only protect you, but it can also keep our healthcare system healthy so that it can do and respond to uh, the needs of the, the population in our community. Okay, thanks Andrea. Uh, Mark, let's toss this next question to you. We know that the city council passed a mask ordinance. It says masks are required in any indoor setting that allows the public. And also masks are required in outdoor settings where you can't distance six feet or greater. However, and this is an important distinction, there are no penalties. So do you think this ordinance is having any impact? And uh, I will say, what, is it a real law? <laughs> yeah, okay, thanks. Yes, Susan, it is a real law. Uh, you know, in, in our system, uh, the people vote, they elect uh, uh, leaders, either city council, state legislature, whatever, then Congress, and, and those leaders pass laws. And, uh, on the city level, we call them ordinances. Uh, so it is a law. Uh, the, the face coverings mandate is a law in the city of Ames. And yes, it's true, there is no penalty uh, to it. Um, that was a, a policy choice by the council uh, that 
uh, enforcement be made through uh, encouragement and education and not through uh, penalizing people. Now, uh, some people I've heard uh, think that, well, if it doesn't have a penalty, then it's not a real law. Well, it is a real law and you're expected to, to abide by it. An example I've used is, you know, most of us stop at stop signs, even if there's no police officer around and we think the odds of getting a ticket are pretty slim, we still stop at the stop sign because it's the law and we know it's the law. So we just comply with it. And that's kind of what we expect people to do with the mask mandate. It's, you know, it's the law, you should comply with it. Um, it I think it's made a difference just anecdotally as I've been out and around, about, uh, around town, I have seen uh, more people wearing masks, uh, certainly in the grocery store. There's some grocery stores and other businesses that have signs on the doors now saying, because of the city ordinance, uh, customers are required to wear masks. So I, I think it's had a real impact. Um, and, uh, you know, Story County now has a mask mandate that applies uh, in the rest of the county besides Ames. We have our own ordinance. And uh, so we've got, you know, countywide mandate. And I know as we've seen the numbers go up and up uh, statewide pretty dramatically recently, they've been increasing in Story County, but not as much. And I, I have to think that mask mandates uh, are a, a large part of that, that we're, we're seeing uh, better numbers than uh, the numbers statewide. Mark, I'm just going to throw another question at you. Um, private businesses and businesses like uh, government, like City Hall and the Public Library, we can require masks. Um, and we can say that um, you need it to come in. That's correct? That's correct. Uh, any private business can. In fact, some of the first businesses that required this were some of the big chain stores that required it nationally. And so their, their businesses here in Ames uh, required people to wear uh, masks or face coverings. Um, and certainly uh, the Ames City Council adopted that policy for all city buildings uh, before they passed the, the ordinance that applied uh, generally to everyone. And so uh, businesses, government buildings, that they can, they can all decide on their own policies. You know, churches, schools, they can all have their own policies and, and require masks if they want to. Uh, I think the existence of the ordinance has helped some of them do that. Um, I think some businesses were a little afraid of the pushback from some members of the public if they required masks, but, uh, uh, now they've got the, the city ordinance to rely on and, and encouraging their customers to wear them. So I think what Andrea said is that we're seeing um, evidence that suggests that they're effective along with our other um, pillars of healthy behavior from our Cyclones Care um, campaign about hand washing, physical distancing, mask wearing, and staying home if you're ill. Uh, it's good to see people taking it seriously and taking these proactive measures. So thank you, um, Mark Lambert, City Attorney, and Andrea Cardenas, Health Promotion Coordinator with the City of Ames. I just wanna remind you, our viewer, that Ames Response is an opportunity for you to ask your COVID-19 pandemic questions. If there's something you're curious about, let us know. We can put it in the next episode of Ames Response. Uh, send us an email at COVID-19 at cityofames.org. And also remember that the city has COVID-19 information on our website, uh, cityofames.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for watching.